going around the table. If you do first pick one and the land gets opened, you actually have a decent chance of getting both just because the hand where battlements isn't particularly good. So people are going to be passing it. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know how much weight to put on that because the truth is that we don't really need to. Henry Garrison's very good on its own. A 2-3 three for 3 is like fine, but if it can attack even just once or twice, you, you, you're starting to build up quite an army. Yeah, I like this card a lot. Um, I'm pretty... Uh, I lean towards giving it a B or a B+. Plus. The yeah. thing is, it's such a powerful ability that when it goes well for you, the game ends really quickly. Because it forces your opponent to get in combat with it. So if you have combat tricks or removal, you're almost certainly going to be able to do it again. Yep. Once you're doing it again, you're paying zero mana for the ability and you're yeah. going to get four 1-1 one, one creatures. Oh, God. I mean, the downside of getting the 1-1s one, is that they're forced to attack into potentially bigger creatures which eat them. But you're still going to do damage with the ones that get through. You're still going to do damage with this. And like I said, you just even like one pump spell or removal can make it so that those bigger creatures that are happy to block just die and and, and the game goes really well for you. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Hammer Garrison as well. I have it in that B2B plus range. Yeah. Uh, same thing as you. Um, and then it does look, it's not a downside that it happens to meld with handware battlements. And if you can make that happen, I mean, you can get a writhing township, which is a seven, four trample haste that gives you two, three twos that are tapped and attacking when you swing with it. Sure. Yeah, it's good. But if, um, I, if I had this card and I saw the land, I would take it unless there was premium removal or, or like super good uncommon. I would take it just because when, when it melds, it's insane. Yeah, it you is turn completely forward, insane. You attack with like. <laughs> what looks like 13 power yeah well you need to get to like six mana to do it or oh, whatever yeah you're right yeah. Another... but still yeah, yeah. it is still completely absurd though it is 13 power seven of its trample <laughs> yeah. and, the, and the land is good the, yeah the, the land does the, things pay a red to give a guy haste i mean if i was a two color beatdown deck i'd be happy to play that in a 17 land deck it wouldn't be great but it would be really strong in some kinds of games like if both people are in top deck mode no hand no creatures drawing and, and giving creature haste it's pretty nice yeah yeah not too bad we'll talk about that land in a little bit too yeah it's it's three red red and tap it to to do the activation uh next is harmless offering two and a red for a sorcery at rare target opponent gains control of target permanent you control yeah the color shifted donate i, yeah. I played a pre-release this weekend and my promo card was harmless offering i'm sorry and i struggled to even find a card that was worse yeah I, this just has to be one of the worst cards in the set. Yeah, it's it's an F minus minus. You, yeah. Under no circumstances do you ever put no. this card in your deck, and no. if you ever put it in your deck, it's pretty rare that it would even have an outcome in the game effect yep. on the outcome of the game. No, nope, just don't play it. Just literally does nothing. Yep. It, the, the thing is, uh, people love to construct the scenarios where it, it donates something that that matter like that is bad for their opponent. But the problem with that is that even that is far fetched because you still have to construct. Uh, you still have to actually make that happen in the game where you've drawn, resolved, cat, you know, and, and even then, I don't think that's even a thing here. So, yeah, I'm just out on Harmless Offering F. Um, Impetuous Devils is two red red for a 6-1 devil. It's rare. It's got trample and haste. At the beginning of the end step, you have to sacrifice it, so you're only getting it for a turn. And when it attacks, up to one target creature defending player controls blocks it this combat if able. Yeah, I saw this card for the first time at the pre-release, and when I saw it, I went, wow, this card is really good. Mm -hmm. I would have, my first snap judgment on the card, I would have said it's a B plus because most of the time when you play it, you're going to kill a creature, and you're going to deal some amount of damage. So dealing four to a creature and two to the player for four mana, that's a great rate on a card. Oh, yeah. And it can, it can go up from there. You can deal three to the opponent, deal four to the opponent, depending on what you kill. I'm like, oh, it's removal, and it also has the... You know, you can Macabre Waltz, do it again, Rise from the Grave, do it again. It's like kill your creature, deal two, kill your creature, deal three, like multiple turns in a row. Mm -hmm. But what came up for me is one game my opponent had a Thalia, so my guy okay. just came into play tapped. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. One game my opponent had Doesn't a 4 Doesn't Thalia four have first, first strike also? <laughs> yeah, it has first strike, which is really bad. That happened in a different game. A guy had a 4-4 four, four first strike. I was like, I can no longer cast this card. That's yeah, no oh, that's, that game. is brutal. Yeah, and, and and one game my opponent had the tapper, the one in a white tap target mm. creature. Tap so target non-human. Mm -hmm. Tap it. It just dies at the end of the turn. It's pretty Ugh. rough. So I think there's upside there, but it's really weak against white decks because of all of that stuff that can happen first strike especially is just brutal and, and like if your opponent can just dual shot it or they can just yeah. you know use some kind of small you know 
I don't know. I like the card, but it's much worse than I thought it was at first. Yeah, I, I actually feel the exact same way. I like the card as well. It does have a powerful effect. I think I'm still probably running it until, like, in, in my red decks until proven otherwise. Like, meaning yeah. if my opponent does play some of the cards that you just mentioned, I'd be more likely to take out my Impetuous Devils. But I, it, I've played against it, and it's like, yeah, oh, that's really good. Like, I'm taking four damage. I'm losing a creature. That's, that's pretty strong. I have no idea where to grade it. Yeah, I like it at about a C plus, but with the with All the right. note that you should sideboard it out pretty liberally. All right, I like that too. Uh, Mirror Wing Dragon is a mythic dragon. There's always one of these floating around. Three red red for a four five with flying. Thumbs up. Whenever a player casts an instant instant or sorcery spell that targets only Mirror Wing Dragon, that player copies that spell for each other creature he or she controls that the spell could target. Each copy targets a different one of those creatures. Yeah, what the hell? Um, a 4-5 five flying for 5 is a great card. Um, some of the time, this is going to be a bonus ability, and more often it's going to be a downside. The extra ability, you mean? Yeah. I don't know, so, maybe not. Well, maybe so let's think of it. Let, let's just walk it through. So the, the first case scenario that when you cast your big mythic dragon is that you're worried it's going to get removed. So if your opponent says, oh, I will you know, target your mirror wing dragon with a spot removal, you know, murder your, your mirror wing dragon. It yep. says whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell that targets only that. So that does that, that player copies that spell for each other creature. He or she controls that spell could target and it targets all of them. So that would murder their entire team. Yeah. If they wanted, if I wanted to murder my opponent's mirror wing dragon, I'd be agreeing to murdering all my own creatures. Okay. So that's, that's pretty cool for, for the mirror wing dragon player. Yeah. Now, also, though, it says whenever a player, so that means me too. So if I have a mirror wing dragon and I say I'd like to cast giant growth on it and give it plus three, plus three until in a turn, it's also going to target all my other creatures, right? <laughs> player cast an instant or mirror wing dragon. That player copies that spell for each other creature he or she controls that. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I guess okay. it's just mostly upside. Well, but then, but then what if my opponent decides that they want to giant growth my mirror wing dragon? Yeah, that's that's when you get in trouble. Like yeah, if, they attack if with you five attack, things or whatever. Yeah, you attack me with your mirror wing dragon, and then on the next turn, I grizzly mutation it. All my guys are huge and have lifelink now. Huh. It's like you, you can definitely get burned by playing with this card, but almost all the time I'm red, I'm gonna put this card in my deck just Same. because it's such a good rate. The stats are so good. Yeah, it's it, it's somewhat resilient to removal because of the them getting all their stuff yeah up. well i think it's worth it i think it's definitely yeah. worth it it it's just means it, it is there's, it's yeah, not there's, there, some, there's there. some downside here yeah um b plus a minus like it's still really good yeah i'm in the b plus b range i'm pretty averse to p putting cards in my deck that can have that can contribute to me losing and this just directly <laughs> yeah this definitely does fall in that category but i yeah. think it's just so powerful you should play it all right b plus for mirror wing dragon Another mythic rare, rare is next. Nahiri's Wrath is two and a red for a sorcery. And it says, as an additional cost to cast Nahiri's Wrath, discard X cards. Nahiri's Wrath deals damage equal to the total converted mana cost of the discarded cards to each of up to X target creatures and or planeswalkers. Wow. Yeah, this card is amazing. That's I think insane. It, yeah, I think it's just the best card in the set. Oh, really? You think it's that good? Yeah. The thing is... The, the cost is so low, and the upside is so high. If I just discard one card that costs four mana and two or three lands, I can do four damage to four target creatures. <laughs> it's just three mana. I discarded a couple of lands and one spell, and I did 16 damage. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's just doing so much so quickly. Like, you, you almost can't lose when you draw this card because it does so much damage to so many creatures. Like, if your opponent's just not playing creatures, okay, it's going to be a little bit worse. But in any normal game of limited... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just it's just crazy how, how strong this card is. That is absurd. Yeah, and for only three mana, that is completely off the charts. I mean, it, it, it almost reads destroy all your opponent's creatures, right? Yeah, yep, yep. You have to have a spell in your hand and, and, and more than one card that isn't that spell. Wow. But again, anytime it's in your opening hand, you can't fail to meet those requirements. No. And just, yeah. as long as you're playing a, na a game naturally, like you have a couple of lands that you're not playing – you draw this, you're one card away from killing four creatures. You just have to draw a card. Wow. 
yeah, the, it's just, it's crazy. This card is really powerful. Um, unless I'm forgetting an even stronger card, I think it's actually the best card in the set. All right, Nahiri's Wrath, A+. plus. Yeah, A+, plus for me. Welcome to the team, Nahiri's Wrath. That is amazing. Uh, Stromkirk Occultist is next. It's two and a red for a 3-2 Vampire Horror. It's rare. It's got Trample. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of your library. Until end of turn, you may play that card. Uh, of course, you do have to pay any costs, uh, you know, associated with it. It's also got Madness for one and a red, which is a nice, hey, you know, you'll take a Madness. Like, again, Madness isn't the type of ability that makes or breaks a card, generally speaking, but uh, it's a nice to have. It's like, sure, it's cheaper, too. Madness on this card is much better because of a card like Insolent Neonate. Mm, mm -hmm. Because that's a card that's already pretty good to put in your deck anyways. If you just play it turn one, mm -hmm. you attack for like four damage, and then later in the game, you discard a land, which is as if you're not even discarding a card at all, and, and it basically just cycles. Yeah. So that's a card that I'm happy to put in my red decks as long as I have a little bit of madness. And the madness with this card when you draw both those in your opening hand is very good. Yeah. You can go play it. Turn End of turn, you can play this thing. Even you can just play it and block like a 1-2 or 1-3. Not that that's going to come up much, but whatever. And then when you hit with this card, it's like an Ophidian or a Scroll Thief, you know? Right. You're drawing, and you're it's a Scroll Thief with drawing. Trample. Yeah. So no, I like it. Even in the situations when your opponent blocks this with a 2-2, two -two, you deal one damage and get a new card. Yeah, this this card is great. I have it at about a B, only yeah. because at the end of the day, it is still a 3-2. Yeah, I, I do too, though. I mean, the thing is, is that every line of text on this card is upside. The vampire, uh, the fact that it's a vampire is minor upside. Manus is upside. Trample on a 3-2 three, for 3 is already fine. And then the ability that when you hit is a good ability. I mean, that is just a good ability. And we're tacking this all onto a card that we would probably include in our deck anyway as a 3-2 trample for 3. So yep, Trumperk Occultist, I like it at B. Very good card. That's it for the red cards, which is going to move us on to green before we circle back to white and then get to our uh, gold and, and colorless cards. Uh, the first green card is Eldritch Evolution. It's one green green for a sorcery at rare. It says, as an additional cost to cast Eldritch Evolution, sacrifice a creature. Uh, search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less, where X is 2 plus a sacrifice creature's converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield, shuffle your library, and exile Eldritch Evolution. There's a lot going on here. Uh, I know that a lot of people have their eye on this for constructed. I'm curious where you come down on it for limited. Basically, you're sacrificing a creature and upgrading it to two slots on the mana curve. Uh, and also, of course, getting to, to tutor and search out a creature in the process. Yeah, in general, I don't like this card. Uh, it's it's I, I don't like it for all the reasons that I said last week I didn't like Emerge, because sacrificing a creature to make a new creature comes with risk of it mm. being bounced or it being killed and you getting two for one. And this one's even worse because it doesn't have the option of just pay eight mana for it. Mm -hmm. so those at least said some of the time you get to dictate how you play this card this is you always sacrifice this card yeah um i want to say it's unplayable but there's enough random stuff going on there where if i had a creature that when i tutored for it i was going to win the game almost all the time that i put it into play mm -hmm. i would play this card but even that's rare and i mean maybe if i had like three copies of foul emissary i would play this because i would get a three two i'd go up the curve I don't know. I'd have to have a really strong incentive for sacrificing or a really strong incentive for tutoring. But yeah. pretty much pretty much I would not play it. I mean we can sweet we can sweeten the pot a little bit by remembering that there are a significant number of those, you know, kind of expendable cards, you know, the O2 that makes a three two, those yeah. type of cards that are like kind of meant to be sacrificed. So if you were gonna be doing the the whole emerge thing anyway, Eldritch Evolution might have a better spot. Uh, you know, just because you're going to have more fodder for it that you really don't care. Like, you're effectively upgrading a blank on the board into something that actually matters. The upside's not even that high, though. You're it's not. You're paying three and sacking a card you invested four in to replicate a six-mana card in your deck, but you could just wait a few turns and play that card. And the downside of this card is that it's just uncastable. Yes, there are times when you just can't do anything. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually not super high on Eldritch Evolution myself. Also, just because it's really hard to, to get a limited deck where everything lines up exactly the way you want. You know, I mean, I guess if you have a bomb in your deck that costs six or less and you're running a couple of the, the O2s, then maybe you can you can run the Eldritch Evolution. But it, it, this does not come across as a bomb-worthy card for me at all either. 
Yeah, if I was in charge, I would give it an F, but I'm going to give it a D minus uh, with the optimism that it's possible. All right, yeah, I was going to give it a D. Um, Emrakul's Evangel is two and a green for a 3-2 human horror. It's rare. And uh, you can tap it and sacrifice the Evangel and any number of non-Eldrazi creatures. If you do, uh, you get a 3-2 colorless Eldrazi horror creature token onto the battlefield for each creature sacrificed this way. Yeah, it's got a lot of words, but it's not. It's it's it's, it's saying a lot, but it's not really telling you anything. <laughs> it's true to its name, <laughs> the yeah. <Emrakul's> Evangel. <laughs> <laughs> it's just selling yeah. a lot of snake oil here. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I like it. I don't really like it that much either. Uh, it does not protect you from wrath effects. I, I thought when I first read it that it did, and then I thought, wait, oh. no, it doesn't do anything. That you just have a bunch of Eldrazi sitting there that die instead. Man, um, it, because of summoning sickness, it's like you have to play it, and then you have to get it ready. And at that point, it's going to make it so that targeted removal is going to be a little bit worse on your cards. God, um, but not even that much either, right? I mean, no. minorly worse. Like, if you want to attack with your Emrakul's Evangel, then you can't activate it at that point because it's a tap ability. So that's just not a thing. Yeah, but be because it's a 3-mana three 3-2, three I'm almost always going to put it in my deck. And it has some upside of, like... You can sack a creature that had sleep paralysis on it. If you're if you get an unfavorable combat because of them playing a trick, you can sack it and kind of stay card neutral while they lose a card. <laughs> Excuse me, but yeah. yeah, in general it's bad. But I imagine I'm always going to play it because it has a unique effect that could yeah, pretty hard. I manage. agree, and, and on a body that you'd play anyway. Uh, one thing to note is that you do have to sacrifice it as well. So. Yep. You know, if, if they sleep paralysis one of your creatures, you can sacrifice that creature and Evangel. And you're getting a 3-2 back on the Evangel, so it's basically neutral anyway. Yeah. Um, let's see what our next rare is. It looks like it's Ishkana Graph Widow. Oh, yeah. It's four and a green for a 3-5 legendary creature spider at Mythic Rare. It's got reach. So a 3-5 reach for five. And you can also pay... Uh, six and a black to have target opponent lose one life for each spider you control. So Ishkana, of course, counts as one spider. But also there's Delirium. If you've got Delirium, you get uh, three one, two green spider creature tokens with reach when it enters the battlefield. Yeah, this card is really strong. There's a lot uh, going on here, yeah. I'm pretty comfortable giving it an A. Um, I think a 3-5 reach for 5 is, is an above-average card for limited. Agreed. And once you get to Delirium, you're you're very closely mirroring Cloud Goat Ranger, which was like often when printed better than a lot of the rares in the format. And the last ability, it just says you have a card that once you achieve Delirium the most likely thing is that you get into a board stall or you just run them over. And the last ability just directly damages the opponent for mana, which yeah. is exactly what you want in a board stall. When you're sitting there behind a bunch of beefy Spiders. reach creatures, yeah. I like it. This card is great. It, it, I have it in an A. In a deck that can consistently get Delirium, it might as well just be an A+. Plus. Like For sure. When you get Vessel of Nascency and you can get Delirium faster and dig through your deck, you have a card that's going to come up more often. It's just very good. Yeah, I have Ishkana Graph Widow at A as well because in a Delirium deck, it's an A plus, like you said. In a not Delirium deck, it's probably like an A minus or maybe a little bit lower than that, a B plus or something like that. A three five yeah. reach for five that can never make spiders is yeah. like fine, right? Like that's like yeah. B minus. You wouldn't cut it, but it's it's nothing special. It's nothing special, but if if you have any chance of getting to that point, it's amazing. And also, I, I like the idea of grinding somebody one life point at a time for it's seven four. mana. Oh yeah, for that way, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it the hard way, buddy. Why not? If <laughs> you got a, the mana to spare. What a terrible way to lose a game of Magic. Uh, <laughs> permeating mass is next. This is one of the coolest cards I've seen design wise in a while. You know, you and I. Oh, and after having played for a long time, I've kind of seen a lot of this, right? We're like, oh, I get it. You took that idea and mix it with this idea. And now mm -hmm. this one is new to me. <laughs> it's like, what? It's a, it's a one, three for green. It's a spirit. It's called permeating mass. It's a, a, a rare. It says whenever it deals combat damage to a creature, that creature becomes a copy of permeating mass, which then of course would deal damage to another creature at some point and turn that also into a copy until everything's just copies of permeating mass everywhere. Yeah, the, the, the tough thing about this card is often when it is dealing combat damage to a creature, a creature that you'd want to be turned into permeating mass, it's often just going to kill your creature. Yes. Kill your mass. So Is that bad for you? It's not great. 
I mean, I mean, they now have a stupid permeating mass. It's a one three. You could just chump block a seven seven with it and get yeah. some kind of mileage. I mean, I think in general, it's not a very good card. I would not want to play with it. I probably have it about a D because one mana for a one three is bad, and the ability is significantly and noticeably worse than death touch. It, it is. It it, it feels like bad death touch to me. Yeah, instead of killing a creature, you're turning it into a mass, which can be used against you. It can turn one of your creatures into a mass. So, I don't know. It, it's playable, but it's I really It's so like it. weird. Yeah. Like, In the end, for me, it's just low power. You're paying one mana for one power, and you're hoping to get favorable combats with it, which may or may not happen. 